Sabrina 2000's comic, issue 16. Already it starts on a bad note because Jem's in the story. Sabrina's not a good audience surrogate in the slightest because she's smiling at her. Jem reveals that she just bought the big wooded lot next to her house and plans to build her dream home on it. Ripping up the trees in an old shack in the woods to begin a five-year construction project for a mansion. This seems familiar. She says that her parents wanted to move out on her 18th birthday, literally as soon as possible. Gee, I wonder why. If Sabrina was smart, she'd point at her and magically change her mind, which the sitcom Sabrina could do. Sabrina says that Jem's new house would block out the sun. Salem wants to turn Jem to snail and salt her. Quigley says no magic because he's racist against witchcraft and sympathizes with Jem for no reason. And Hilda says she's got all the paperwork from when she bought this house, so they want to check the boundary lines. Quigley is the complete opposite of an audience surrogate, not wanting to see any magic at all, which would make the series pointless if he got his way. That's like how Eggman wants Sonic dead, and the audience doesn't. It turns out Jem's property extends into Quigley's tulip garden, so thankfully Quigley changes his mind on that silly idea and says they should zap her to Australia's outback. Hilda idiotically doesn't know what to do when it'd be really easy for a witch to just point and change someone's mind. Already a bulldozer shows up and threatens a big oak tree, which is apparently sacred to druids and warlocks. He warps the workers to an Arabian oil field. I prefer if Hilda did this instead of a cant. They can just use magic to change the workers' minds after warping them back and erasing their memories. Zelda uses magic to transplant the oak tree from Jem's lot to theirs. I'm sure nobody will notice. Salem brings them back and somehow didn't erase their memories right away. So they blame their coffee for a hallucination they think they had. Later, Hilda has an appointment with the Historical Society, while Quigley wants to transplant his tulip bulbs. His whole unique thing of being a gardener as a guy got old after the first few stories. It'd be better if Zelda was the gardener, and Quigley didn't exist. Then she'd be a bit of a deeper character. Sabrina sees the spooky jar, which they make no effort to make impossible for her to find, and says that she's not allowed to use her magic for no reason. But that doesn't stop her from hiring Spooky to scare Jem, which is exactly why it makes no sense that the Spooky Jar is still in her house. Out of complete and utter nowhere, Sabrina and Jem get kidnapped by a monster that wants to eat them instead of Spooky. This obviously only happened for padding. I expected the story to simply end with Spooky scaring Jem. Why the hell is Sabrina merely hitting the goblin instead of using her magic? That's just shameful. Spooky wastes time with its tedious dialogue threatening the monster. It's forced that he always speaks in rhyme, as if we needed another reason to hate him. Sabrina carries the unconscious Jem out of there and says she's sorry she used magic to try to solve her problem. Is that actually supposed to be the message? Because that's the definition of a broken S-up, because the goblin had no reason to show up, so this wasn't in any way a logical consequence. Her plan should have worked. She plans on apologizing to the bad guy of the story for no good reason because she's a piece of shit character in the story that can't be related to by anyone at all. Somehow I'm expected to believe that the goblin defeated Spooky. She tells them to spare Jem, and out of nowhere, Spooky says that Sabrina's been punished enough and turns out Quigley was turned into that goblin, even though he wanted mortals to be warped to the Australian Outback. Because Quigley overheard Sabrina and Liz Spooky and stopped him and created a scenario to convince Sabrina not to use magic for no reason. Spooky would just tell Quigley to bug off. He never had any problems with doing what Sabrina said and using magic for her. Why would he do what Quigley wanted? I hate Quigley so much. Sabrina had every reason to use magic. This is black and white morality. And that kind of morality is what's they call to say you have serious problems if you don't grow out of it quickly. Why is Quigley still in the comic? In Arrested Development, George Bluth made a point of teaching his kids lessons by scaring them. Granted, it was with a one-armed man instead of a monster, but the fact remains, he even matured in life later and taught his family members not to scare George Michael. So even George Bluth ends up being better. What does it say about Sabrina's family? They're perfectly fine with
traumatizing her to teach her a lesson. Just like George Bluth from Arrested Development. And his family was intentionally portrayed as a family with bad parents. Sabrina tells Jem that Jem just slipped and hit her head on the ground, and she lies that instead she said this was a good place to be taunted. Sabrina sheds a tear because this pisses off Jem even more, and now she wants to triple the size of the mansion she's gonna build. Then Zelda tells Sabrina that the old shack used to be a colonial grist mill, which is supposedly enough of an excuse for Jem's plot to fail. Because once Jem's parents heard that they could get a tax break by donating the property that they don't deserve anyways, they signed it over. Hilda gets hugged as she says that it all worked out without witchcraft. Sabrina's scene should have been cut out entirely. This kind of parenting of theirs would only make sense if all three of them were mortals, because then of course they'd hate their magic. Why are Sabrina and Quigley smiling at the end while mentioning Quigley's idiotic plan? Wasn't it obvious they should have brought back Cousin Ambrose instead of had Quigley? This story's worthless shit. Sabrina could have been in a coma after telling her aunts about Jem's plan, and the story would have resolved itself anyways. You do realize that treating something like magic as the forbidden fruit just makes the audience want it even more, right? In the comedy page, Salem asks Sabrina if she wants to do stuff with him because he's going stir-crazy, and she has to finish her essay first. He asks to borrow her surfboard, and the story ends with them being shown on a computer screen surfing the waves because it said something about surfing the internet. That wasn't funny, it just wasted my time. In the next story, Sabrina tells Salem that it won't work and to take all these flowers out of her room right now, as one of the heart-shaped flower bushes has the words, let's be friends on it. Considering that Salem uses magic when Sabrina doesn't have the guts to, she needs Salem. And so do we. Salem says it's just his way of saying he's sorry. He says that he was just trying to help Sabrina. Yeah, as usual. Sabrina says it wasn't very good help. Salem heard it suggest to Harvey building a snowman, and then Salem summoned a walking snowman that freaked out Harvey. Okay, so the entire premise of this plot is insultingly forced. First of all, he had no reason to make the snowman walk. Second, if he's lived on this planet with mortals in it for this long, He'd know by now that he should summon the snowman where Harvey can't see it. Most importantly, Sabrina was just suggesting building a snowman with Harvey to have something to do with him. Sabrina says that she'll decide when she wants to use her powers. Yeah, you mean basically never? She tells Salem to promise not to bother her when she's playing soccer this afternoon. He promises, and then plans to wait outside the gym and congratulate Sabrina when she wins. First off, this might lead to him using magic anyways. And second, if she doesn't win, he'll just bother her by congratulating her for no reason. Then he hears Jem's team talking to each other. Wait a minute, how in the world is Jem on an opposing team to Sabrina's when she's of the same school? Why does she always have to be there as the antagonist even when it's forced? Anyways, she says that it's cool that even their coach thinks Slug loves a girl with his wig on. Even though I'm sure his base wouldn't be convincing. And somehow he's smiling anyways. This is because he's been promised front row seats to a concert in exchange for making sure Jem's team wins. Wouldn't the coach know that Slugloaf isn't a girl who goes to his school? Wouldn't the high school sports team coach have to know which exact student is on his team? He couldn't just put a false name into school records, could he? I guess we're supposed to believe the coaches only know about their students as people who tried out for their team. I just remember that in gym class before high school, the gym teacher was always your normal teacher who would know the students. Salem's mad at Jem for wanting to cheat, and he remembers that he promised Sabrina that he wouldn't interfere with the soccer game. He remembers that he promised not to set foot inside the gym itself. Once people know it's a guy because of the guy's voice, it also turns out he slammed into Chloe, who says that that's only done in wrestling. Logic would dictate that he would be disqualified immediately. So Salem wants help because he wants to be needed. As a soccer ball, he's kicked into Sabrina, and bounces out of here before he could get kicked around, which causes Slugloaf to fall. I really wish I saw him fall instead of a stupid sound effect word. The wig falls off and the game's forfeit. And that means that the Tigers win. And the story ends with Sabrina saying that Salem would have made a cute mouse. Good thing she ends the story in a good mood with him. I didn't trust the story not to be mean to Salem every chance it got. In the next story, we actually see Sabrina do some magic for once. 
and she's completely casual about it. She floats them signed and sealed Valentine's Day cards in a heart shape. And Chloe thanks her for helping her and calls it a cool trick. Sabrina says they're signed just like hers. I'm so glad they're alone together. Chloe complains that she can't believe their homeroom teacher forced them to send Valentine's to every boy in class. Uh, is that an abuse of power? I've never heard of that. They're forced to do this so that no boy's feelings would be hurt. So their teacher is forcing them to be a tease and flirt with every guy in the classroom. Chloe asks Sabrina what kind of book is this, and Sabrina begs her not to tell anyone. Sabrina says that she found Hilda and Zelda's secret book of love spells. No wonder it's called Ancient Love Spells of Primitive Man, because love potions would have been banned with the rise of social progress because they'd be considered a type of assault, not just brainwashing. So what is this book doing with a bunch of preachy hypocrite witches who refuse to let her use magic at all? It wouldn't be in the house. I expected her to find love potions in the magic book. Why would there be an entire book devoted to love potions? Wouldn't there be just one love potion? Sabrina says that while she likes Harvey, she wants to cast a love spell on a card for a new boy because he keeps ignoring her. The scene ends there without her being called out on it. Of course, the problem with Sabrina thinking it's not creepy to use a love spell is obvious, but she's just a complete idiot. And a well-intentioned, naive person who thinks she's really good. Salem and Sabrina can erase memories. So there's no chance of Ryan being traumatized by remembering being forced to love her because he'd forget it anyways, or he'd think he actually loved her. But at this point, I'm just glad that Sabrina of this comic is actually using magic for a change. Ryan falls in love with Sabrina, but because bullshit, somehow the same spell is cast on every single card instead of being only on Ryan's card. Logically, Sabrina would imagine the spell to be cast on the card with Ryan's name on it. The only magic she used on any of the other cards was meant to sign and seal them. This is meant to give Sabrina just desserts by making her know how it feels to be the victim of unwanted affection. Even though one, it's contrived, so it's totally unsatisfying. Two, Sabrina's not made to be happy with it like Ryan, so it's not a taste of her own medicine exactly, because it'd be much more horrifying for her if they all get their hands on her. Although logically, what kind of love potion would have the recipient of it force themselves on the spell's target? That'd be bad spell design. Also, oh yeah, she's a witch. So logically, she would undo the spell on everyone but Ryan by merely pointing. Sabrina in the 70s comic merely pointed to cast the love spell. Why is Sabrina being taught about China's Ming Dynasty back in the 15th century? She's not in college. The lunch bell goes off. Gem asks why Sabrina is suddenly the most popular girl in school. And the blonde near Gem looks too much like Sabrina just with a different hairstyle. It's amusing irony that Jem claims to hate Sabrina so much when one of her best friends looks like her. It's the kind of art style where everyone has the same face. Sabrina wants the boys to give her a little room so she can eat her lunch, but doesn't point to make them leave her alone. After school, we see Sabrina and Chloe disguised as objects because they want to hide from Sabrina's aunt that she used the love spell. But because Diabol sucks Machina, the guys find them anyways. I have a question. Why didn't they go into the girls' bathroom to hide and then teleport home? Hilda gets told the truth by Sabrina, who immediately tells her that the spell can be broken by Sabrina telling the boys that she doesn't love them. Harvey doesn't go away and just wants a ride on his new scooter, and Sabrina says that's because Harvey's the only boy who really loves her. And shockingly, his response is, Give me a break, Sabrina. So, I was actually supposed to believe that they were just friends in this comic. I suspected that at the start, but it wasn't made very clear because in the earlier comics, usually they aren't kissing a lot. I guess the censors thought them kissing would be too risque. Now Sabrina doesn't get as much out of spending time with Harvey. It'd be kind of unrealistic for her to not react to him saying this and keep smiling. On the bright side, I love that the story doesn't end with her aunts being cruel and punishing her when she clearly already learned her lesson which is that the world doesn't make sense and will arbitrarily shit on you for no reason. I think a natural way for the writing to progress is that Sabrina would date Ryan and be bored with a love spell because it makes a guy whose only personality is person in love with her when she'd want to actually get to know him. And then Sabrina would have undone anyways. 
If your aunts have a book on love spells, and don't hate it enough to get rid of it, how the hell are they still single? At first I thought the plot would be about Sabrina and Chloe fighting over a guy. I'm glad it wasn't. It would cheapen their friendship if they had fights too often. The first story, by Mike Gallagher, is about Jem using her parents' wealth in an outlandish way again by trying to start a mansion construction project really close to Sabrina's house so that she can make her miserable. Her powers don't have much limits, well Sabrina's do. You'd expect this problem to be resolved with Sabrina just pointing at her to brainwash her into changing her mind. Then the plot could've been about something else. Instead, she ignores common sense and cries to her aunties, who resolve the whole plot by themselves off-screen. Quickly ruined the story by having a ridiculous hypocritical punishment to scare Sabrina, and ruin her plan to scare Jem into not bothering her anymore. When he himself wanted Jem's plan to fail, the second story, with a forced premise where Salem used magic for no good reason and bothered Sabrina, has Salem try to avoid bothering Sabrina by not using magic at her soccer game. He would've just stayed home and congratulated her there. Not found out Jem was cheating at the game by having a guy in a wig on her team. Why is Jem on the opposing team when she's from Sabrina's school? Salem moves out of the way of Slugloaf's kick as a magical soccer ball and makes him fall and his wig falls off so Sabrina's team wins by forfeit. You'd think that Jem's team would have been disqualified anyways the instant that Slugloaf used Body Slam on Chloe. I'm glad Salem got to save the day instead of predictably making Sabrina mad at him again. The final story has Sabrina use a love potion on the Valentine's Day cards that she's forced by her teacher to give to every boy in class because bullshit. At that point, why doesn't the teacher outlaw Valentine cards entirely? Then he won't have to wait a few minutes before starting the class. There's no reason that the love spell would be on every card instead of on just Ryan's. Why didn't you want Harvey's attention instead? The plot could have easily been from Sabrina using the magic book. Not an illegal book that wouldn't be in her house in the first place. And the plot would have obviously ended as soon as it began because she'd just point or say she doesn't love those guys and turn off the spell right away. Not cry to her aunties. I'm glad it was a story about magic. And I love that her aunts weren't hard on her for once. But having Chloe in the story was completely pointless.